Hello and welcome back to NorCal 715. I have this Utilitech LED light bulb. I already taken the globe portion off of it. And uh, as you can see, I purchased it in uh, November of 15, Black Friday. Sale at Lowe's. I think they were going for 50 cents a piece at that time. Anyhow, let's screw it in here. And uh, yeah, let me shut the light off. You can see how actually bright it is. With just the ambient light on it, it's, uh, it's very dim. So let's see what's going on with this baby. Get a meter set up here. Go to DC volts. So uh, it has a power supply down in the base of it here. So let's measure the voltage coming up here. And we've got 163 volts, which is almost precisely 120 volts through a full wave bridge rectifier and a filter capacitor. 120 times 1.414 would give us approximately 160 volts. So that's all working great. So let's try to figure out why the LEDs are so dim. Kind of hard to see on the camera, but if you follow the circuit trace, this circuit trace just leads directly to this LED and then they just go around in a clockwise motion and they end up at this last LED here. So I'll try to get my meter in here carefully. And we have 163 volts. So we are spreading 163 volts evenly across all of the LEDs, 7.4 volts. We'll just go around the dial and put this in uh, non-auto ranging. We'll put it in 600. One of these is going to be dropping more voltage than the other ones. That's going to be the problem. There it is. Almost 60 volts dropped across that one LED. So let's put the ohmmeter on the low impedance range. This is about a 3000 ohm input on this meter, this Fluke 117. There it goes. Now we've got full brightness and we're dropping about 38 volts across that LED at this point. So we can safely say that one of the LEDs in this package is bad. I wonder if I put a little bit of pressure. That made it flicker. Definitely right there. Now you've lost everything. Go back to DC volts, 62 volts, and just the uh, 10 million ohm input of the meter is enough to cause the uh, LEDs to begin to, to uh, light dimly at least. So definitely got a bad LED in here, and I suspect it's just because they're running these things once again at the design potential or even past design potential. The actual claimed life on the box on these was only 3,000 hours which is incredibly low for an LED light, which is why they're blowing them out on Black Friday for 50 cents a bulb. Anyhow, it's not that bad when you think about it. I got uh, almost four years out of it with everyday normal usage. Probably got at least 3,000 hours on it by that time. So I have another one of these that uh, failed catastrophically and I was starting to make another video and my probe slipped and I accidentally dumped the full 160 volts uh, across the... Uh, transistor here and uh, damaged it. So I'm going to uh, try to strip one of the LEDs off of it and replace it onto this bulb. See if I can get it going again and see what they're doing in here uh, with the regulation. All right, so now we'll try to pop the board out of this other fixture. It's just pressed into place. There's really nothing holding it down. No leads to speak of underneath, however. All right, so I'm just gonna try to get these uh, leads unsoldered off of the board here. Just gotta remember the yellow one goes to positive. There we go. Okay, we'll give it the heat gun treatment. 
Uh, the other one's sitting here oriented in the correct position, ready to go back on. There it is. Okay, so I've got the new LED on the board ready to go and I'm just gonna go ahead and prep it with some fresh solder. Make things go on a little bit easier. That looks good. Next, I'm just gonna take a little dab of flux. Put the flux on there. Hit it with the heat gun again. Once the solder becomes molten, then I'll just edge the new LED into place. I took it on there very nicely all right it's rather warm still so I'm just going to try to tack them on there very quickly pretend this a little bit next we'll plug her in and see what happens And we get light, plenty of bright light. I brought the kilowatt over here. So bright, very hard to see. 8.1 watts is what it's drawing. Let's take a look at the power factor on it. 0.56, absolutely terrible power factor. Anyhow, it is drawing only eight watts. Of course it is 13 VA, not too terribly good. Anyhow, the LED is working and it is very bright. So it's probably incredibly hard to see on here, but I thought I'd make some voltage measurements real quickly. So going from the collector to the emitter, we see 14.3 volts. From the collector to the base, we see about 1.1 volts. And from the base to the emitter, we see 13.3 volts. So I have a quick little diagram here that I drew up get that unplugged so it's not blinding me anymore it's incredibly bright and so what they're doing is they have a PNP transistor in here and with the aid of these resistors and this network right here they're getting the PNP transistor to turn off when this voltage exceeds the 0.7 volts of bias there is a 22 ohm resistor and a 5.1 K to basically make 21.9 ohms and you've got the four 12K resistors, which make approximately 3K. Now I've removed two of them, so it's 6K, 6,000 ohms, right here in this resistor divider network. So let's go ahead and take one more out of the way and see where we end up at. We'll grab a little screwdriver to push that guy out of the way. There we go. Get the kilowatt back in view here. Now we'll see where we're at. And we lost focus. There we go. Uh, I saw it going between 7.9 and 8.1. Of course, there's naturally voltage fluctuations going on here, but you could certainly uh, affect the output by changing those resistors around a little bit in there. And since I don't have any 40 or a uh, any SMD 47 ohm resistors, I do have a standard uh, 47 ohm resistor. So let's take that 22 out and put a 47 in there and see what kind of results we end up with at that point.
get the kilowatt in view once again and see what we end up with here. It should be quite a bit less. 4.5 watts instead of the about eight and a half watts that we were getting previously. So just a simple modification, uh, taking out that one resistor. You can't even see it because the LEDs are so bright. Uh, and just replacing that with a higher, higher resistance resistor. We went from 22 to 47, so we basically doubled it. And so we should be looking at about half the current draw, which is true. So with this kind of regulator, um, if you want to extend the life of your 50 cent Black Friday Lowe's LED light bulb, you could certainly spend a couple hours working on it like I did. But nevertheless, I just wanted to show you this bulb. Let's pull the base off of it now and look at the uh, little rudimentary power supply and figure out why it's not compatible with a dimmer. So I realize it's going to pretty much ruin the bulb at this point, but I don't really care because I'm not going to be using this for anything. Now I think on some of these it's just press fit under here. Sorry, off camera. Yep, so there's the uh, the hot lead just dangling in there right there. Next we're just going to take this base and just remove it. Plain and simple. And all they've done is just fold it over the uh, neutral lead and then that way the whole thing will actually come right out of there. So there's the little power supply and we'll try to draw a little uh, diagram of it very quickly so you can see exactly what's going on here. Okay, so here's the diagram of the little uh, power supply. In fact, it's got something under a piece of heat shrink tubing right here. So let's try to cut this open and see if I can get it to peel back halfway nicely. Nope. There we go. And it's just simply a resistor. They don't seem to be doing anything in the way of current limiting, fuse wise. So it is a 10 ohm resistor and appears to be about a one watt resistor. But anyhow, here is the uh, little power supply. So I'll draw the 10 ohm resistor in there too. So you got your AC coming in here, your hot lead, 10 ohm. They've got a little bit of harmonic suppression. And so um, they've got a 0 .33, 0 .33 microfarad capacitor and two 1K resistors, so effectively 500 ohms to ground. And all they're looking at right here is high frequency suppression. Uh, at 60 hertz, this 0.33 capacitor is effectively just a high resistance resistor. In fact, I'll do the math on it here very shortly. It's called capacitive reactance, where it, uh, based on the frequency across the capacitor, it turns into a resistor. So at very high frequency uh, transients, as this uh, diodes may be switching in and out, it's going to absorb some of that signal. Anyhow, the live through a 10 ohm resistor into the input of a full range bridge rectifier right here. Out of the full range bridge rectifier into a 15 microfarad 200 volt capacitor. And then uh, the leads from there go up to the uh, circuit board, which is what we saw over here just a moment ago. They do have a 300K resistor right there uh, across the capacitor to discharge it. Uh, once the power is removed, it, it'll drain any residual, especially if you have an open LED. Uh, that capacitor is going to sit charged, and you could potentially have 160 volts on that. And if somebody like myself took it apart and started troubleshooting it, and they managed to put their fingers across those terminals, they could cer certainly get a 160-volt DC shock, which is not too terribly happy. Anyhow, that is exactly what's going on. This thing is not dimmable because... A uh, typical light dimmer uses a triac and it chops up the sine wave into a more of a pulsed square wave. 
And since we're using a full ray bridge rectifier, what you might end up with instead of a, a nice sine wave like that, you may end up with a signal that all of a sudden just pulses and you get a little bit down firing and then it pulses. The full ray bridge rectifier is going to rectify this portion right there. Now an incandescent light bulb would only see effectively half of the sine wave. So it's only going to effectively charge and discharge that element at about half the normal brightness. Now there are some uh, bulbs on the market that have a much, much more sophisticated power supply where they actually will take this and average the voltage. They'll still send it through a bridge rectifier into a power supply, filter it, but then they'll take the averaged voltage going in here and modulate that power supply to control the LEDs for the optimal brightness. Anyhow, that's about all I can say about the Lowe's 50 cent Black Friday uh, Utilitech light bulb rated at 3,000 hours. I think I definitely got more than 3,000 hours of use out of this before it went south. Okay, so I went ahead and did the math on this capacitor and uh, a 0.33 ohm resistor at 60, or excuse me, a 0.33 ohm capacitor at 60 hertz will have a resistance of 8,038 ohms. And at 50 hertz, it'll have a resistance of 9,646 ohms. So what they're looking for is to suppress very high frequency spikes, harmonics, whatnot, uh, to keep them from going back and feeding back into the line, which is a very big problem with high frequency switching power supplies. Anyhow, I certainly hope you enjoyed this video on the uh, teardown fault diagnosis of a 50 cent Black Friday Lowe's LED light bulb. Obviously, this one is not going to go out of the recycle bin, but with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill and out of the recycle bin. If you enjoyed this video, please consider making a donation using the PayPal link on my YouTube homepage, or you can go to paypal.me slash NorCal 715. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.